Praise the Lord and good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Oh, it's a privilege to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Because the Lord is good and his mercy endureth through all generation. We invite you to stand to your feet right now. As we come before his presence with thanksgiving. For he alone is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Let's lift our voice. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him. And be thankful unto him for he is worthy, worthy of all. God this morning for he is worthy of all praise let's look to the Lord Father God in heaven we worship you we bless you we honor you in this place today thank you God for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way thank you that we can be in the sanctuary clothed in our right minds with lifted hands open hearts receptive minds ready to hear a word from the Lord now we pray that you'll have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless God one more time, everybody. If you love him, praise him. If he's been good to you, praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. We're still living. What are we living, everybody? grace for life and what else are we doing we're sharing the grace for life we're sharing the grace for life because if the grace for life is good to you then it's going to be good to somebody else if it's good for you it's going to be good for somebody else and so we praise god i pray that that we're coming out to revival and experiencing a special outpouring of god's anointing a fresh drop of dew from the son of the living God being 
being poured out upon our brows and our hearts as we as we are open to things old and new we open to things old and new uh, I, I love the old old story and every now and then God sprinkles something new in the old old story can I get a witness somebody amen and amen um, please take a moment glance through your bulletin apply yourselves accordingly tomorrow uh, the Allegheny's conference constituency meeting is taking place down in Burtonsville Maryland there will be need for a lot of prayer as we select the officers for the conference who will serve for the next quinquennium and so we praise God for the work that has already been done by the nominating committee but the conference we surely need the prayers of the Saints we I said we need the prayers of the Saints because of this work that stands before us is going to be done it's going to be done only by the unction of the Holy Spirit and we need people in leadership who are spirit-led who are spirit-led and spirit-fed somebody ought to say amen um, so then uh, I'm gonna get out of the way the one designated to do the welcome is on her way up uh, come on up now uh, and do the welcome sis and while she's coming up uh, we do have you know for the for the nights I've been preaching sometimes your voice gets weary and we do have a man of God in the house this morning who's going to fill out this morning's service. Pastor Beckles is going to bring a word from the Lord today. He's going to stay in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And then for the second service, I think I might uh, have enough voice left to be able to do that second service. We're glad for Pastor Beckles and for the word God has placed in his heart. God bless you. Happy Sabbath, church. The privilege is mine to welcome you all to the church at this time to have a, for the blessed Sabbath day. I will take a moment to welcome any visitors with us today. Could the visitors please stand? Amen. Whether you came to look or look for a place of worship, I extend a welcome to you. I leave these words with you, church. This is the day that the Lord has made, a day to put off the trials of the past, to make a positive choices for the present, and to anticipate hope and joy for the future. Could you, as a musician plays, church, could you welcome the visitor and each other at this time? Thank you. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Won't you tell them that you love them in Jesus' name? Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you.
Praise the Lord. Do you believe that he loves you? Amen. Praise the Lord. So we invite everyone to stand right now. We're going to sing about the name of Jesus, how wonderful his name is. We just want to worship his holy name right now. And we sing like never before the name of Jesus, proclaim it. Because there's no other name like him. They say the sun comes up. The sun comes up, it's a new the Lord in here today. highly exalted him and given him the name which is above all other names at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of those in heaven and those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father to the glory of the Lord because he is Lord he alone is Lord and so we came to lift up his name today say death death could not hold and the you. veil tore the before, veil tore before the you. silence in silence the voice the sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are Jesus. 
other name. There's no other name like Jesus. It's the dearest name we know. Tis the angels joy in heaven. Tis the Somebody ought to say, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, how sweet the name. Life-changing, demon-chasing name. The name of Jesus. Burden bearer, heavy load sharer. We can bring everything and cast it at his feet, knowing that he still hears and answers prayer. It's prayer time. We invite you to come now. Come, bring your burdens, bring your cares, bring your sorrows, bring your praise. Bring whatever you need to bring. Let's lay it at the foot of the altar. Come, let us worship. Let us bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord. Draw me Amen. Close to you. Never let me go.
Father, we take this moment, Lord, to thank you for the gift of life. Far too often, Lord, we take waking up for granted. So we thank you, Lord, for the gift of drawing another breath. We thank you, Lord, for clothing us in our right minds. We thank you, Lord, for traveling mercies because we're not guaranteed to leave our home and reach here safely. We also thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Sabbath, where we get to celebrate your name to the highest of measures. We come humbly before you, dear Lord, bearing all of the sins that have been attached to our name since birth, knowing that we are not worthy to call upon your name, yet your son seen it fit to sacrifice his life for our behest. So we come here in a measure of, of gratefulness, dear Lord. Lord, we are aware of all the calamities that befall us, Lord. On a day-to-day -day basis, Lord, we are reminded that your soon coming is drawing near. From natural disasters, from hurricanes to earthquakes in various parts of the world, to the hearts of man growing eviler and eviler on a day-to-day -day basis. When all seems lost, dear Lord, we, we stop and we, we, we rejoice because we know that you said in your word that when these things come to look up, because redemption draweth nigh. Lord, as we've transitioned into the month of October where we focused on these are the times, Lord, the times are becoming more and more apparent that the end of the Lord is here. We take this, Lord, as an opportunity for us to wake up, to open up our eyes and understand that we need to make sure that our calling and our election is sure. We pray, Lord, for our pastor as he continues to lead us, not only on the day-to-day -day responsibilities of a pastor, but to be the shepherd of this flock. We ask, Lord, that you will anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, dear Lord. That you will empty him out and fill him up with your spirit. We pray for, Lord, also his wife, who is his support system, Lord. We pray that you will continue to live in her, that when he may feel physically or emotionally weak, she will be the rock in which he can lean upon for rest. We pray for, Lord, the speaker of the hour this morning. Yes. We ask, Lord, that you will touch his lips yes. with the coal that is around the seed of grace, dear yes. Lord, that as he opens his mouth to speak, it is not based on education, it is not based on past experience, but it is based on the words that is coming directly from our Lord and Savior, Thank Jesus Lord. Christ. We pray for, in a special manner, Lord, our community. Yes. We pray, Lord, that we will not just be a building that sits on 270 Reynolds Terrace, but that we'll be a beacon of hope for those around us. That individuals will see that there's something different about the people in that building, that they want to change their lives. So we ask, Lord, that you remove any spirit of coldness that we may have, any callousness or selfishness that we may have. Oftentimes, dear Lord, those who call on your name, we we pride ourselves as keeper of the, of the word and decide who is worthy of it. But we're so thankful, Lord, that your, your son came and died for all, not for those who we think are worthy. Lord, lastly, we pr pr present before you the leaders of the Allegheny East Conference, Lord. We ask, Lord, that the names of the individuals that have been brought forward will not be lifted up based on political maneuvering, will not be brought up based on tenure, will not be brought up based on impressive resume. But we pray, Lord, that the leaders that are being brought forward will be direct representatives of you, whose sole mission is to make sure that the message of the end time is preached throughout the world. We ask, Lord, that you lay your covering hands of mercy over all of the territories of the Allegheny East Conference yeah. that will be a beacon for not only the United States, but for the world, dear Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Forgive us where we have fallen short, dear Lord. We thank you in advance for all of the mercies and the miracles that you'll be working within our lives, seen and unseen. Yeah. 
Thank you again for hearing our prayer, Lord. Yeah. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. is coming now our musicians are coming to render special music a hymn of meditation uh, we are so glad to have Pastor Beckles with us today Pastor Beckles is a pastor from back home in Guyana you notice I said back home <laughs> and uh, he's been a uh, part of this church family his wife sings in the praise team their sons are very engaged here in Pathfinder and Adventurers and we're just grateful to the Lord for bringing him here to minister to us today. Also, uh, speaking of being engaged in the community, yesterday most of us saw a video clip on the news about police abuse in the oranges at the school. And uh, uh, I took the moment to call the mayor and to speak with him. And uh, the good news is that the police officer who manhandled those young girls, he will lose his job and they are filing charges against him. Because my message to the mayor is, Mr. Mayor, we can't have that in our town. We just cannot. And so a part of our responsibility as community leaders is to be engaged in what's happening in our, in our community. Are you with me, everybody? And to speak to the issues that relate to our community. And so uh, let's keep our township in prayer, leadership of our township in prayer, as uh, things cool down, uh, that the Spirit of God will have sway and that we will continue as a church to have positive impact on our community. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everyone. I came this morning to minister to you but God has already, through praise and worship and prayer, reminded me that I am nothing. And he is the only one who can minister, you know, to everyone. Amen. You know, um, I've had a particularly trying week. And it's only through the grace of God that I'm here this morning. And I want to thank him for forever being my friend and my father and my provider. And I know that he is the same to you. Amen. Steal away. Steal away. Steal away to Jesus, amen. Steal away, steal away home. I ain't got long to stay here. Steal away, steal away. Steal away to Jesus. Steal away. 
Still a way home I ain't got long To stay here My God, he calls me He calls me through the thunder The trumpet sounds Within my soul I ain't got long You ain't got long We ain't got long To stay here Still away Still away Still Amen. We are to steal away to Jesus. And that's the one of the old Negro spirituals that the slaves would sing down in Bush Harbor. Somebody would just, one slave would just pass through the Bush Harbor and would declare, steal away to Jesus. They know they'll be having church later that night, some way down in Bush Harbor. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity to share the word with the Church of the Oranges. And we would like to get into that right away. Uh, we'll take our Bibles and turn to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and our verse for meditation today is verse 7 verse 7 says bear at all things would you stand I notice as we honor the reading of God's word Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Let us bow our heads as we talk to God. Father, just speak to us today from your throne in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And uh, I've just put a little label on that passage of scripture for which to preach love is God's language love is God's language and I add a little thing there how about us I want to start by saying that one of the significant characteristics that are really supposed to set Christianity apart from any other religion is love let me say that again one of the significant characteristics that are really supposed to set Christianity apart from any other religion is love. Because we serve a God who is love. We do not serve a God who would ask us to strap some uh, device on ourselves to kill other people. That's not love. Somebody not listening. And so love is one of the things that set us apart. We are commanded to love by God. We are commanded to love God with all our heart and with all our strength and with all our soul and with all our mind. And to love our neighbor as ourselves. So love sets us apart from every other world religion. Prophecy is another. Jesus Christ is the other. Ain't no other religion has a savior. Yeah. 
Ain't no other religion that prophesies. But love, everybody claims to have love or to be loving. Now, in the King James Version, the Bible says charity. You see, we start at verse 7 that says, bear at all things. But you have to back up because the Bible says charity. It would have said, bear at all things. Are you with me? And I want to let you know today that there is, own, there is no royal road leading to heaven. There is no other road that is leading to heaven except the road of charity. Are you with me? That's right. Except the road of charity. Now you see, the Apostle Paul in the, the church of Corinth, they were dealing with gifts, spiritual gifts. And they were so concerned about their gifts and who had what gifts and how important those gifts were to them rather than to the God who imparted those gifts to them. And the Apostle Paul had to draw their attention to something that is very important. Paul says to them, if you read the chapter, and I hope that Pastor dealt with that earlier, if you read the chapter, you would see that Paul draw their attention to something that was greater than spiritual gifts. If you read verses 1 through 3, you would see that Paul shows them the preeminence of love. That love is greater than all spiritual gifts because without love, those gifts are empty. And that is why the Apostle Paul says in verse 1, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass and as a tinkling cymbal. Yeah, yeah. So in verses 1 through 3, the Apostle Paul set out to show them that without love, your spiritual gifts would be empty. Yeah. And then in verses 4 through 7, he shows the practice of love. Yeah. Love is something that just cannot be said. Yeah. I'll get to that a little later. He shows the practice of love. How love is greater than all spiritual gifts because it is selfless in its nature. Yeah. And you would read those verses and recognize that it says love is patient, love is kind. And it narrated at least 15 different qualities yeah. of love. And then in verses 8 through 13, he shows the, 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 the permanence of love. So first we had the preeminence of love, then we have the practice of love, and now we have the permanence of love. Yeah. That love is greater than all spiritual gift yeah. because it outlasts them. Yeah. Now abide faith, hope, and love, these three. Uh -huh. But the greatest of these is? The greatest of these is love. So love... Love is the pivotal yes. characteristic that we need as Christians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we are to love, we ought to know how to love and what it means to love. Somebody listening to the preacher? Yeah, yeah. The word the Apostle Paul used here for charity in the King James Version is the word agape. And I don't need to school you anymore on agape. Everybody know what agape is, except that I would like to say that agape is unconditional love. It's a love that does not look for anything in return. It's a love that loves in spite of. You see, we love because of. We love somebody because of what we can get from them. We love them because we know them. But the love that the Apostle Paul is talking about, it's an in spite of love. Yeah. The love that Jesus Christ demonstrated on the cross of Calvary. Could somebody say amen? amen? And so if nothing we do matters apart from love, we better understand what the Apostle Paul means by the word love. I said that word is agape. And so when Paul describes the character of love, in this verse, he is talking about unconditional love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, agape love, agape love is a love of choice. Yeah. I don't know if you get that. Yeah, 
I said agape love is a love of choice and commitment. In other words, you choose to love. This is not romantic love. This is a love of choice. Are you listening to the preacher? Choosing to love another person in spite of who they may be or what they may have done. That's the kind of love that we ought to have. That's the New Testament love. That's the love of Jesus. And that's the love the church needs to portray in these days. You could not have friendship love or romantic love for your enemy. But Jesus instructs us to love your enemy. You can't have romantic love for your enemy. And so Jesus understood what he was talking about when he says to love your enemy. Go back to verse 7 of chapter 13 because I just want to stay there a little bit and then I'm going to close this up. Our English translation would give us the impression that these, the characteristics that are listed here, It would give us the impression as though they are adjectives. But in the Greek, they're actually verbs. And I'll go back to the most simple definition of a verb that I learned way back. Love is an action word. Love is doing, uh, sorry, a verb is doing something. The word has to be doing something. And so love is doing something. I wish somebody understand what I'm talking about. Love is doing something. And so the Apostle Paul says in verse 7 that love bears or beareth all things. Now that word that the Apostle Paul uses there in the Greek, and I'm not here to really teach you Greek, so I'm just trying to get the understanding of the scripture. But the word that the Apostle Paul uses there in the Greek is a word for roof Uh or covering if we are to bear all things Uh the intention is for us to be a covering a roof roof. Uh because Peter tells us that love covers So this love that the Apostle Paul is talking about is not a love that will try to expose somebody when they're not doing right. This love does not complain. This love, this bear at all things is a love that covers. Now I'm not talking about covering up sin. I am talking about protecting the person. And, and let, let me shoot something here that might blow your mind. Do you know that every time God's law and human need clashes, that human need always wins? My God. My God. My God. Human need always wins. Just, just let me give you a little example. In John chapter 8, some guys brought a woman to Jesus taken in adultery. And they had the sermon to preach to Jesus in the church. Now they disturbed disturbed the Jesus in church. And they brought the sermon to preach to Jesus. According to the law of Moses, she should have been stoned. Somebody listen to the preacher. But Jesus understood what it is to be all things. He understood what it meant. He understood what it meant to, to, to cover. To be a protection over somebody that might be suffering. To be a cover for somebody that are struggling in some part, some aspect of their lives. Jesus knew what it means to bear, to cover, to protect. They said she should be stoned. Jesus said, I know. But then he also said, neither do I condemn thee. Not that he doesn't condemn sin. He does. 
He said to her, go and sin no more. Yeah, yeah. So this protection is not something that covers sin. I wonder if somebody's listening yeah, to what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. This is not something to cover your sin. This is something to cover you. And that is why I love Jesus. Because when I'm done and out, Jesus steps in and he puts a protective arm over me and protects me from the devil. When the devil sows doubt in my mind and he tries to tell me that you are not worthy, Jesus steps in and he says, my blood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Love covers. It protects. The pastor would protect his church because he loves the church. What do you say? A good shepherd would protect his sheep because he loves his sheep. And parents would naturally protect their children because they love their children. But the children would turn around and say, that's all for protection. The apostle Paul calls that love. Yes. The next verb that the Apostle Paul used there is the, is the verb that says love believes all things. Could somebody say amen? amen. amen. Love believe at all things. The word means to trust or believe and to commit yourself to one or to something. Yeah. You see, love is not naive. And don't get the impression like I'm trying to tell you that love is naive. So you believe everything that people say. No. Yeah. Love believes to the point where it says, I will support you. Mm. Love wants to support you. Love wants to believe in you. Yeah. Regard regardless of your past. Yes. So when that church member comes to church, the one that we know repeat their sinful behavior, and this time they come and they give the testimony, we do not sit down in the congregation and say, you said that before. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. We come to the point where we believe yes. that this time, this time, God is doing something uh -huh. in that person's life. Yes. We must believe enough because we serve a God who believes in us. Hallelujah. You see, it's, it's easy to talk about people, but when we put ourselves in the place, we would recognize that we have been sinning over and over and over again. But we have a Savior. We have Jesus who keeps loving and forgiving us over and over Hallelujah. and over Hallelujah. and over again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to God. He believes in us. That's why he gives us another chance. Like that woman taken in adultery, she, she should have been stoned. And us, we should have died a long time ago. You know it. But Jesus believes in us. He keeps giving us another chance. He keeps giving us another chance. And that is the kind of love that we ought to have. We ought to start believing. It's not believing blindly. It's, 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 a, it's a way to trust people. We've got to learn to start trusting yeah. each other. It's a kind of love, kind of belief we exercise in choosing a spouse. Yeah. Yeah. We are attracted by love at first sight. We like what we see before we start to inquire about what we see. And we would ask somebody else, uh, a friend, a family, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> Seen anybody? Yeah. I'm talking to somebody else. I'm talking to aliens right now. <laughs> well, we see and we believe. Yeah. We start believing. Yeah. 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 What we see and what we hear, okay. we believe and then we take a decision that we will get married to that person because we believe that we can live with that person yeah. even though you haven't lived with them yet yeah. and you just gotta wait yeah. Yeah. until you start living with them because come see me and come live with me yeah. I, I, I'm sorry uh, I, I'm sorry I, I went back home there for a minute I'm sorry I'm sorry <laughs> 
I, I, I'm sorry for that. I, I went back home there a little bit. But it's the same kind of belief. We have to believe in others. We have to believe in our spouses. We have to believe in each other as Christians. We got to believe in our brothers and our sisters in the church. A lot of times that are lacking. That is lacking in our church. But Paul says, if you cannot believe all things, then at least you got hope. Because hope is the only thing that takes human suffering seriously. Beyond hope, we're doomed. If we have no hope, you see, I could live all my life in this earth with nothing. Because I hope that one day, I believed what Jesus did for me made a lot of sense. Now I'm living with that hope, that blessed hope, a hope that burns within my heart. And that's the hope that we ought to live with. Love hopes all things. Love, in other words, is unabashedly optimistic. Unabashedly optimistic. Hope is optimistic. When there's no place left for believing, a good, person's will, a good person will still love because we have hope. We have hope. Yes, sir. Don't give up on your people. Yes, sir. Don't give up on any church member. Yes, sir. Hope. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Donald Trump is still a candidate for the kingdom of heaven. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give up on the president. God is still Jesus died that whosoever will. Yes. 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 And we as a church, we better have some hope for those folk. Some of them are hopeless. They are living hopeless. They don't think about the future. All they think about is now. We've got to start praying and hoping that God reaches them. Because we know the end. And even though you, he may not, Donald Trump may not be of your party of choice. Or you may not like his, his rhetoric. We still got to hope. He's still a candidate for the kingdom of God. And so we must hope all things. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes, sir. Love will continue to hope even when there is no hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's not easy to do. Mm. We'll continue to hope when there is no hope. Mm -hmm. But I love the Apostle Paul because the Apostle Paul says that if you can't hope anymore, you must endure. After you can't hope anymore, you can't believe anymore, start hoping. You can't hope anymore, start. Just hang in there. You may be tongue out. You may be feeling like you're far apart from God. You may be feeling like as though God is not getting through to you. You want to know what pastor's experience sounds so real, but yours is, is absent. My Lord. Hmm. You can still have, you need to endure in the presence of God because love endures. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. In other words, love never stops loving. Thank you, Lord. That's what it means to endure all things. Love never stops loving. You got to keep on loving. Mm. <laughs> They're hating on you. Mm. Keep you got to keep loving. Yeah. Your spouse not talking to you. <laughs> Why y'all laugh? I said something funny. 
Notice y'all just laughed. You didn't, you didn't say anything. You were quiet. I said, when your spouse stopped talking to you. Yes. 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 My Lord, my Lord. Love needs some substance. Yeah. Love is not about talk. No. Mm. Yes, if people learn to endure, if we learn to endure as we ought to endure all things, mm. then I believe there'll be fewer divorces in our world today. Because love endures. In other words, church, love has some, some substance. Love has some, some, some foundation. Some, love is not just an emotion. Love is a principle yes. and principles do not change yes. with circumstances. And that is why when somebody stops loving you, you ought to continue loving them. Yes. Yes, sir. All right. oh. You know, I remember when I was a young man. I'm not talking over this side. I'm talking over this side. Yes, yes. And uh, I, I remember I had a, a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking over this side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were living apart. I was living in Linden. Brother Peter would know what I'm talking about. She was on yeah. the East Coast. Uh -huh. In those days, travel was not as easy as it these days. Uh -huh. As it is these days. So we used to write letters. Anybody remember the days when yeah. you wrote letters? <laughs> you had no texting, no FaceTime, no... What's up? No. You had a right. And one of the things that were very familiar and characteristic about letter writings was the way you would sign off in the bottom. Somebody know what I'm talking about. The way you would sign off in the bottom. Love Leon. Anybody remember? Let's do a little exercise for a minute. Take charity out of the Bible just for this moment. Put your name because you love Errol. Are, are you following what I'm talking about? Put your first name in. Go back to the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Let's read from verse 4. Yeah. Just, 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 just to check out this little exercise. Yeah, yeah. Is that alright? Yeah. Verse 4 says, there's supposed to be charity there. We put in our name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leon suffereth long. Uh -huh. And this kind. Yeah. Yes, sir. Somebody understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now, you can't get it if, if, if you hear my name. You got to put your name. My because you're love, right? Mm -hmm. You're a loving child of God. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Put your name and just, just try it. Yeah, and be honest with yourself. And look deep down within and see if I am really loving the way God instructs us to love. Hello. Yes, sir. Coming to church is not about our qualifications. It's not about what office we hold in church. It's not about your status in society or in the church or anything like that. It's about living a love of lo a life of love. Loving God's people wherever they are. Could you put your name and say, Peter, suffer as long and this kind. You know what the Apostle Paul means there? That we ought to suffer long. Like and do. And after you can't suffer anymore, you must still find a kind way. Yeah. Yeah. You see, a lot of us suffer, and then when we finish suffering, we, we blow up. Yeah. Huh? The Apostle Paul is saying, find a kind way to show your disapproval. But you got to put your name in here. Yeah. You got to put your name 
inside of here because love it bears all things it believes all things it hopes all things it endures all things and that's the love of God that's the love of God love Christian love remains under its burden it never changes it remains under its burden what Paul described is what he also prescribes so what we just read in the scripture is not only a description of what love ought to be, but it's a prescription of how we ought to live. Hello. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry, pastor asked me to preach on love. <laughs> yes, sir. Bless God. Bless God. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus is the best lover that I ever know. Yes, he is. Are you with me? Yes. He's the best lover that I ever know. Now listen to me. Pay attention to this because you need to understand this. To learn to love like Jesus is to learn to love those who are difficult to love. Yes, sir. Let me see. I want the pastor to believe it. Let me see if I say it over here. To learn to love like Jesus is to learn to love those who are difficult to love. Jesus loved the Pharisees yeah. that set out to harm him. Jesus loved them in spite of their rejection. Yeah. Jesus loved Judas in spite of his betrayal. Yeah. And Peter in spite of his denial. Yeah. And us in spite of our... And he still loves us. He keeps on loving and forgiving us over again. Yeah. We've got to learn to love like Jesus. Hallelujah. And that is learning to love those who are difficult to love. But I must bring this sermon to a close. Listen, brother, brothers and sisters. Not even God. Not even God. Huh. Could have expressed his love for us in mere words. Huh. Not even God. Jeez. Because love is not about talk. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, but God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet disobedient, while we were yet barbaric and diabolic and uncontrollable and stubborn, while we were headstrong and obstinate, Christ died for us. And his death is a demonstration yeah. of his love. Yeah. Yes, sir. We've got to start loving. Yes. Like we know what love is. Yes. Too many times I hear complaints in the church that the church is not loving enough. Uh, uh. And many times I'm tempted to ask those who say it, how do you love? Uh. Yes. Most times we only know to point the fingers at others. Why we got to start turning the searchlight in and looking at ourselves and see if I love like Jesus loved. So in spite of what they do to me when I'm not re-elected for an office, I still attend this church because I love. Yes, sir. We've got to start loving like Jesus loved. Yes, yes. He demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners. Yes, God. He didn't wait to see if we were going to choose to love him. God did not wait to see what choice we would have made. He went ahead and he died for us. If that is not love, and that's why I say love is God's language. Because God doesn't only talk. He walks the walk. He loves us deeply. Loves us so much. He's desperate to save us. I said God is desperate to save us. Huh? God emptied out heaven to save us. That's desperation, brethren. We got to learn. That's desperation. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. That's desperation. God demonstrated that love. What else do you want to see? What more could Jesus do? More. Tell me what more can Jesus do? That the apostle John was amazed at the love of Jesus. He says, Behold, yeah. 
What manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called. You only read what the verse says. I read, I read the implication that we have, we should not have been called. The implication is that we were not worthy to be called, but Jesus still calls us his children. And that is because he... And so today, everybody can experience the love of God. Isn't God wonderful? All of us can experience the love of God. The Bible tells us the most famous verse for God. <laughs> for God so loved. What else could Jesus do? Listen. I close with this. Jesus is our savior and our example. We are his disciples. And we've got to start loving like he loves. Amen. Amen. We've got to start loving like Jesus loves. And again, that's learning to love those who are difficult to love. Everybody loves the pastor because he's nice. A lot of people don't see that brother or sister who's really struggling. I mean, this is a big church. Large membership. It's a good thing if you learn to know a couple of people. Those of you who sit over here, it's a good thing if you learn to meet some of the people who sit over here. We got to learn to love everybody. And that is why I will sing of Jesus' love. Sing of him who first loved me for he left bright worlds above and he died on Calvary I will sing of Jesus love is there anybody who want to sing about the love of Jesus who want to say Lord I want to not only sing about the love of Jesus but I want to start living the love of Jesus I want to start living love I want to start being love this church must be changed because now this church will become a loving church because everybody now is loving hallelujah God bless you. Pastor, I'm done. That's it. I'm done. Come on. Come on. Bless the Lord, somebody. Come on. Everybody ought to be standing on their feet right now. Thank you, Lord. Just reach out and hug somebody right now. Tell them I love you in Jesus. I love you in Jesus. Give somebody a handshake. Give them a hug. Tell them I love you in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. God bless you. I love you in Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. There's this beautiful song. I will sing. Here we go. I will sing. Ah! Uh -huh.
about everybody. I've got to give somebody a chance today who just wants to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Maybe there's somebody here who when you walked in, you were not a saved member of the family of God. But after hearing this wonderful message by God's manservant, you just want to give your heart to the Lord. You understand how much he loves you. And you want to yield your life to him today. If you just want to say, Lord, I, I want to surrender. I want to commit my life to you. I thank you for loving me. And I love you back. Today I commit to you in love, in unity. I commit to you in surrender. If you want to make a decision to follow Jesus as your Savior, raise your hand where you are right now. Just do it quickly. Don't even think about it. Don't dwell on it. Just raise it quickly. You understand how much God loves you. And you want to love him back. You want to give him your life in commitment and surrender. Raise your hand quickly right now. Raise it quickly. I'm looking for your hand, child of God. I'm looking for your hand. God bless you. I will see. Hallelujah. Somebody else who just want to raise their hand. Somebody else right now. Somebody else who wants to come. Mama's coming. Who else is coming? Who else wants to make a decision? To have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sweetie. God bless you. Oh, praise God. Stay right here, Mama. Somebody else. Hallelujah. Who else is coming? Who else is coming today? Today is your day. Who else is coming? Who else wants to stand on the Lord's side? Who else is willing to make a commitment to love him because he first loved you? To give your life to him because he gave his life for you. He took the first step. All you've got to do is take your one little step. He took a massive leap, a risk that cost him his life so that you might have the joy of eternal life. Where are you, child of God? I'm giving you one last chance. Raise your hand right now. Say, yes, Jesus. Raise it high. Yes, Lord. I commit. I submit. I surrender. I give myself to you. In Jesus' name. We're going to pray right now. We're going to pray. Father God in heaven, thank you for your daughter who stepped out on faith today and said yes to you. We praise your name for her decision, O oh God. We thank you for your manservant, for using him mightily today. Remind us that love is a verb. It's not something we know, it's something we do. We pray, God, that we will walk in love, live in love, act in love. Now we pray your seal and your blessing upon your daughter who has come forth. May she experience your overflowing love today. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and bless God one more time. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. The one designated to lift the offering now will do so. One of the joys that we have as believers is the joy of giving and it ought to be a joy the Bible says give not grudgingly or of necessity for God loves a cheerful come on somebody a cheerful giver and there is no giving unless there is love the motivation for giving is love God so loved that he gave and so because we love God, we invite you to join us. Because you love God, we invite you to step out and give. 
time for our morning's tithe and offering. I'm going to ask our deacon, deaconesses to come forward. Please remember, guest, if you would please fill out your communication card. You have that communication card in your bulletin. This is what it looks like. If you're a first or second time guest, it's imperative that you fill it out. I will send you something very personal in the mail. So make sure you take a moment to fill this information out so we can reach out to you. Also, um, there are four ways to give. There are actually four ways to give. You can give uh, by the regular means, writing a check or putting your money in your tithe envelope. You can also give online. Uh, but we also have now a text option. You can text, as you see on the screen, text Codo Give to 55469. Codo Give to 55469. Uh, you can give on our website, orangenjsda.org. Or we do have our debit credit card machine back. So you have that option. You can utilize the debit card machine uh, in the secretary's office, the first door outside on your left-hand side of the steps. Thank you so much for being so generous. God has blessed this church this year. We've given away thousands and thousands of dollars to help needy families. While it is true that the tithe goes to the conference, your offering stays right here to help meet the needs of our members, to help pay the bills, uh, and also to help meet the emergency needs across the world. Uh, this week, our church voted, took an action to give several thousand dollars, our business board, several thousand dollars are going to be given to our brothers and sisters uh, in Dominica. Are you with me, everybody? So we ask you to write write a check puerto rico we're going to give money to puerto rico we have members from puerto rico here we have members from anguilla uh, and barbuda and these various uh places that have suffered serious loss so please remember to write a special offering that will go towards those emergencies let us look to the lord father god we bless your name thank you for the opportunity to give we pray that our gifts will be joyful liberal and that we'll know that everything that we sow, every seed that we sow, will bear fruit to the glory of God. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen, amen. and amen. God bless you and thank you. <coughs> Testing one, two. Thank you. 
somebody ought to praise him. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Y'all took me down south for a minute there. Oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now. Herewith said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the massive windows of heaven, pour you out such a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive it. Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity of giving, Lord Father. We want to thank you, Lord Father God, that the offering that was received, Lord Father, it will reach every part of the world, Lord Father God, even locally, Lord God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that the love is the language of God. We thank you, Lord Father God, that we have learned something today if we didn't know it already. So we bless your name and we glorify you in all things. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 We are shifting gears now right into our Sabbath school, and we ask that our Sabbath school personnel will come forward. As they are coming forward, um, uh, let me have your attention before anybody else moves. While the choir is seated, let me have everybody's attention, please. Today we are doing something very important immediately after worship today, after the second service. We're going to do a background check training for everybody who works with children, everybody who opens and shuts the church. Uh, that information is in your bulletin. That information.